Today the task is to replace this master cylinder. Well, here's the new one. And here's the old one. Kind of tucked in up there on the firewall. So, start by removing the cover off your engine, if it's even got one on there. And I need to get this transmission vacuum line, I guess it is, out of the way. So there's a little clip here. You don't want to break this clip. So I'm going to push up on the bottom of this clip like this, maybe. Like that. And pull up. There we go. Get that out of the way. So I've got two brake lines connected there. I've got one large nut right there. And well, the other one is up in there. It's kind of at the top. You can see why. One's at, one's at the bottom, and one's at the top. Now it's the large nut that I have to remove. 15 16 socket. There we go. 15 16 I'll put a swing arm on that. See if I can do this with one arm or not. There, it's rotating. I should be able to do the rest with a ratchet here. Okay, that's one loose. camera away for a second take the swing arm I'll loosen that off and then I'll remove that nut I decided I would take these two fittings off or at least break them loose before I completely remove those two large nuts already my master cylinder is flopping around there so I need to this is 13 millimeters oh, there's one crack loose this one. So I can get in there. Hmm. Try from the top. Okay. They're both loose. And so that means that I can remove those now. There's a connection on the one side closest to the water reservoir. Very hard to get at, however, it just pulls out as long as you can get a screwdriver in there and just pull back on this little clip a little bit and then it should slide out. So that's just to tell the level of the brake fluid. The new master cylinder came with a, a sensor in it, so all I have to do is change the wire. You probably don't have to take this hose out of the way. It goes to the coolant overflow tank. However, I'm taking it out of the way because I need to move the master cylinder in quickly or take the old one out quickly and put the new one in before I lose too much fluid. So I just want that out of the way so that I can slide everything in and there's no restrictions. Here are the two nuts that hold the master cylinder on. You can see everything is just floppy loose. The only thing that's left are the two connections for the, the fluid and I did crack them loose I just snugged them up now so they're not dripping all over the place while I'm loosening everything and while I'm bleeding the new master cylinder so I'm getting the new master cylinder all ready and at the last minute I'm just going to pop this out and put the new one in the kit supplies these little plastic plugs to put into the outlets of the master cylinder while you're bleeding. 
So for bleeding, the instructions say to just screw in these little plastic plugs finger tight. Uh, there's no need to tighten them any tighter than that. It's just to keep air from going back into the cylinder when you're doing the bleeding. Then it says to fill up the reservoir. And I need to put a little bit more in. So, got fluid in there. Now it says take a blunt instrument. Got my extension here. And it says to push it slowly in, no more than one inch. Okay, that's about that much. Release slowly and let it sit. You let it sit for 15 seconds and then you do it again. Again, no more than one inch. And you let it come back and sit for another 15 seconds. So you do this, the instructions say, these instructions right here, they say do that four or five times until air bubbles cease to appear in both reservoir chambers. So this would be both reservoir chambers here and here, I guess. So apparently the first couple of times you should have seen air bubbles come back in, I guess. I'll have to look closely here in a minute. And every time you do that, you let it sit for 15 seconds. So the air bubbles escape and give it another push. And eventually pushing the piston in should be uh, nearly impossible. It should be fairly stiff. I'm bleeding the brakes before I actually take the master cylinder out of the vehicle because I don't want to spend too much time with the lines open. It's dripping all over the place as soon as I crack the lines loose. I want this master cylinder to go in there quickly and then I want to connect these two fittings up very quickly so that I get no air running into the system. Now I found it a lot easier to use my stomach to push on the screwdriver. I give it a little bit of a pressure on the piston and then what I'm doing right now is just loosening I just loosened off the plastic plugs while the piston was still pushed down. Then I tightened them up with my fingers so that they're finger tight. Then I released the pressure. So here I'm going to do this again. Push. So now I've got a kind of a solid pressure and it's hurting on my stomach. And I loosen this off, let out any air bubbles that want to come out. And when I did loosen off the second one, I felt the piston go down even further. Oh, so now I release that and let it sit for a little bit. I think I'm getting more air out that way than using their method of pushing but not providing any place for the air to go except back up into the cylinder. Yeah, there's always something that doesn't quite go right. So, master cylinder's all loose. I'm ready to pull it out and I'm trying to get it out. And on the side of the cylinder is this fitting right here. Uh, this vehicle doesn't use that fitting, but the reservoir has it on it. So what's the problem? Well, it gets in the way of the water reservoir. And I'm gonna break that fitting off, trying to get the new one in there. So I've gotta loosen off the antifreeze overflow. This antifreeze overflow tank seems to be held in by just clips. So I've got a hook tool here. Let's see if I can. And 
that's what I'm doing is I'm prying up the hooks. Uh, seems like the hooks wants to stay there or I'll set the camera down and I'll get those out. Yeah, that's frustrating just to have to do that. Anyway, I had to loosen off the battery, take the battery clamp off this end so I could slide the battery forward about, oh, who knows, half an inch. And then I slid the overflow reservoir forward about not even half an inch and I was able to get the master cylinder out from behind it. So, there it comes. Here we're looking at the power booster and the two fittings where the new master cylinder is supposed to fit on there. So we'll see how easy that is to drop that into position. I'll put the fittings on finger tight just so I don't start losing all of this fluid out of the bottom of the master cylinder. Then I will tighten on the two big nuts. Then I'm going to slide this overflow back, put the battery back, and hopefully we've got it all together in less than 10 minutes. So that was like a real ornery process just because of that one little fitting that didn't fit in behind that overflow tank. Anyway, back together. Uh, connections are on. All the hoses are back connected. And now it's time to start it up and see if we have brake pedal. Goes forward, goes backwards, brakes go on, and now I can go for a test drive. <laughs> 